Welcome to the Curve 2 screencast. My name is Steve Upton from Chromix. I'm a co-developer of Curve 2 along with Don Hutchison. Curve 2 is the next version of Idealink Curve, the leading software for implementing the G7 calibration method on presses and other printing systems. I'm going to spend the next several minutes showing the features and benefits of Curve 2. I wanted to talk about Curve 2 relative to Curve 1 because there were some significant changes between Curve 2 and to Curve 1. Uh, the primary one is that we rebuilt the user interface. You would have opened a single file, a document in Curve 1, loaded all the measurements in, and built curves, that sort of stuff. And then when you had the results from that, when you had some measurements from, from Run 2, uh, you'd have to open up a new document. And Curve had no idea what the connection was between those two documents. And if you wanted to use the calculations of round two in round one, it was difficult to do. You could do the delta setting in round two, but the numbers you got, while helpful, weren't actually as accurate as they should be in order to tweak the round one curves. There were no comparison capabilities between the, the rounds, which is important. If second run's densities are significantly different than the first, then you should be, you know, you should be aware of that because we had a number of tech support problems and other issues stemming from people thinking that curve was the problem when in fact the densities of the second run were significantly different than the densities of the first run. So with curve two, what we decided to do was build what you might call a super document. And so this document actually holds multiple runs inside one single document. Uh, it helps organize things, as you can imagine. Aids in the calculations from run to run to run and allows you to do iterative tuning of your system. In the setup area up top here, there's basically two main ways that Curve can calculate curves. The G7 method, which was used in Curve 1, and now the TVI method, which is really the, the method that has been traditionally used in ISO style workflows uh, and calibrations. Uh, we, we've had some questions about why we included TVI in a G7 curve program, and we decided that it doesn't have to be exclusively a G7 curve program. Uh, having TVI in the software was not that difficult to add. TVI is significantly easier to calculate. Uh, and also, it's a point of contrast. If people want to use it, they can discover why G7 is that much better, <laughs> as we believe. But sometimes you really want to use TVI, so we put it in there. The measured box here is an important one that we found there's a little bit of confusion about. If your RIP doesn't take values that, that are wanted, like for instance, if at 50% you want cyan to be 55, you'd type in 55. If your RIP doesn't do that, but only allows you to put in measured values, then Curve can do a little prestidigitation, invert the curves, and give you the numbers as if they were measured. So this will save some people a lot of work. The other thing you might select here is the target color space. At the moment, Curve comes with Thrackle, one and swap three and swap five built in but you can simply put a folder in the same folder as your as the curve application and you can dump any CGATS file you want in there any text file for FOGRA or any internal color standard and it will load it in here and these color numbers are basically used whenever you're trying to hit some sort of color numbers so I'm gonna leave it at Grackle for the moment so the next stage is the ink test it's not intended as some big complex tool it's just a quick way for you to find out how your ink colors are doing. Before you do your run, you're, maybe you're trying to hit some sort of color, like Grackle 2006, for instance. You can drop a color file in here, and it'll give you a good idea of what's going on. Now, you can put samples in here. They do not need to be a P2P target. They can be just about anything that you might load in. So there's an IT8. So if you have something from a previous run, or a press bar, uh, you know, a bar from the press or something, you can just drop it in there and it'll give you an idea of how you're doing from a color point of view with your inks. Uh, it'll give you density, so Curve now calculates status T density, uh, as well as the delta E values here relative to the color that you've chosen. Now, if you want to choose swap three to compare, you can do that in your delta E calculations and change, that sort of stuff. I've dropped in a P to P25 here. It's based on the Grackle data set, so you can see this is what it looks like when it's absolutely perfect. You know, the dots hit directly on. You can set these values. Uh, if you go under Preferences, you can set the, the, the warning level, basically the, the boundary of the yellow area to 2.5 or whatever, and critical to 5. The main thing here, people say, well, why do you have this? Well, one of the reasons is it accepts any non-P2P target. So I can drop a P2P in there, or if I just have like a ISO proof strip here, you know, the, the little ISO 54 patch strip. 
basically, you can drop just about anything in here. It makes life easier. Let's jump into the runs because this might look more familiar to those who have seen Curve before. Uh, one run is automatically made for you when you open up a new document. Now what I'm going to do is bring in a P2P, load it up, and I'm going to bring in a second one. Let's talk about the bringing in of measurements first. So if you click on any one of those particular measurements, down at the bottom of the list it says average delta E 3.99, max delta E 12. That is the, the delta E between the one you've selected and the average that has been calculated. Now the benefit of this method of doing things, and I'm going to throw a few more measurement files in here, is that it will color code things uh, depending on how far away they are. So in this particular case, what I've done is I've I brought in three identical files and another file uh, from a different, completely different place. In your case, you'd bring in four, five, six. Hopefully, you've been measuring multiple sheets from a press run. You'd bring it, them into the measurements area here. And any of the outliers will be marked in either yellow or red, depending on how far away from the average they are. So it's a quick indicator that some of your measurements may not be very good and should either be double-checked or removed entirely. But this is a quick check so that you can know if one of your sets of measurements um, is, is, is a problem. It's got some serious problems in it. The graphing capability of, of Curve 2 has been expanded significantly. We basically rewrote the entire graphing uh, system underneath Curve. So the first thing you can see is that when I enlarge the screen, they all enlarge, but you can go to any single one and some controls appear here. You can enlarge that to take over most of the window if you want to see it in greater detail. You can also uh, select the magnifying glass and zoom in on any particular portion of it uh, in pretty great detail. I can grab the hand and move around if I want. And I can explore the curves and in, you know, practically any graph that's in curve here you can do this with. Just shrink it back down, put it in place, and go on from there. When we get to the Create Curves area, you'll see that it helps you um, build better control point sets for your RIP. In the next pane, under Analyze, we get into greater detail. Now we've actually created multiple tests. So the ink and paper test makes another appearance here. And you can see how the averaged set of data that you've got here compares to the color aim that you were shooting for. But there's another tab here called G7. And the G7 tab uh, actually introduces some metrics to calculate the effectiveness of the G7 calibration that you've done. There are a number of different things that people have been doing to try and give numbers around the validity of a G7 calibration. We've broken them into two different groups. First one is the curve shape. And what we're doing it with is delta L. So we calculate how far off the points in the curve are from the idealized one. And so if it's perfect, then, then it should be just zero all the way across, basically. In this particular case, you can see that what we're graphing here is both the, the K and the CMY curves. You can see that you know, they're maybe at their worst around 50%, and then they get quite good around 90, and then they go off again about 100. So the second graph here is for gray balance. Gray balance is the second part of what G7 does. First thing it does is get the tone curve looking as smooth and even and as good as it can. And the next thing it does, if you choose the option, is to have gray balance be calculated. Now what we've done here in this gray balance curve is have the AB graph that you might be familiar with of the A and B values, uh, but we've introduced a new metric to many, which is called delta F. Uh, delta F is actually simpler than you might think. If you're familiar with how delta E is calculated, if you leave the delta L component out and you just calculate the difference between delta A and delta B, basically the points in AB, that's what delta F is. It's the measurement of how far off the color is irrespective of the lightness. And the metrics are summarized on the left in the table here. So the CMY is average delta L max as well as the gray balance. Uh, you can get a feeling for how things are going. One thing I wanted to mention is that uh, Don spent a long time on the manual for Curve 2, and it is excellent. It's what, like, honestly one of the best manuals I've read. It's, it's very good. It's thorough. It's clear. Uh, and it does have an explanation of Delta F in, uh, in one of the appendices in the back. So there's definitely more information that you can get about that. Next uh, test that's available here is TVI. Uh, and this is basically the, the dot gain of the TVI graph of the data set. If we were in TVI mode, it would also have results in this column here, basically telling us how well we were doing versus the TVI curve shape that we were shooting for. Let's jump up from Analyze Color over to Create Curves. Now, Create Curves is similar to how it was before, but again, it's been enhanced. Um, 
the graphs are significantly more accurate. Uh, the graph now 